So today I'm gonna to show you how to rig a spear gun that comes with the reel. We're gonna be using the Cherokee Fast today. This is a perfect example um, because this gun comes fresh out of the box with the reel already. A few things that you're gonna need is some monofilament, a crimping tool, some scissors, a lighter, and of course, your reel line. So to get started, the first thing you wanna do is just go ahead and take the shaft out of the gun. We do not need this right now, and it's just gonna be in our way. So we will get this out of here. And the first thing we're gonna do is focus on the reel and getting line onto the reel. We're gonna get this turned around. So I like to run the reel line down the line guide because in the next step when we actually start spooling the reel, this is gonna make our life a little bit easier. So we're gonna run it down all the way to the reel. And then once we get down to the reel, we're gonna have this, again, another little line guide with a hole in it. So we're gonna feed that through the, the line through the hole, just like that. And this is basically just a little slider that helps guide the line out of the reel. A lot of the times you can feed your reel line through this little hole to secure it to the reel and tie a knot on the other end of it. In this case, we're using a little bit thicker and stronger line because we're gonna be targeting um, a bigger species with this gun. So the line does not fit through that hole. So to anchor it to the reel, what I'm gonna do is loop it around just like that, around the base of the reel. I'm gonna pull a little extra string through from the side that's coming from the spool. And so at this point, I'm just gonna tie what I call a fisherman's knot. I'm gonna loop both sides, take your tag end, just go around my finger one, around the line once, and then twice, and then back through the loop that you created right there, like that. This is the knot that I like to use. You can really use any other knot that you want, but this for me is an easy way for the line to continually cinch down on the base and it's not gonna go anywhere. So at this point, I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit. There is a little tag end here that I'm gonna cut. So let's just get rid of that. And then I will burn that in just to make sure that it's not gonna go anywhere. Real quick, boom, done. So at this point, we're ready to spool um, line onto the reel. You wanna make sure that the drag is completely off of the reel. This is gonna make your life a lot easier. Um, I always recommend having whatever spool you're using for line to be fed off of something like this. The reason being that if you have it spooling off the top, that's gonna to be putting a continuous, continuous twist into the line as you spool it, and that can cause problems during the spooling process, during the unspooling process after you shoot a fish or something like that, and it's just, this is necessary, it's very necessary. Um, so at this point, we'll start to spool the reel. So you're gonna to want to use one hand to obviously hold the gun, and with that same hand, you know, kind of guide the line back and forth onto the reel to make sure that's going on smoothly and applying a little bit of pressure to the line. You wanna make sure that the line is getting packed onto here pretty tightly. Um, so that way, when you, if you do shoot a fish, you have some drag on it, the line can't bury down into itself. So we're gonna apply a little bit of pressure using our fingers and then just begin to slowly spool it on, let it grab, and then you just, Begin to do this, going back and forth, slowly working it onto the reel while applying pressure. It doesn't have to be the prettiest because most of the time in the heat of the moment while you're spearfishing, you're never gonna be putting it on there perfect. So I just you know try to do it like I do in the real world so that way you know how much line is going on here and you don't have to worry about Respooling it perfectly every single time. You just want to make sure that's going on nice and even. One side isn't filling up too much. And you just keep doing this until the reel becomes full. This is a 50 meter reel. So we're going to be, for our US customer base, that's gonna be a little over 150 feet worth of reel line, which is more than enough. And we're just gonna keep doing this until it's as full as you want.
Okay, so at this point, the spool has become pretty full. You never wanna completely fill it or what seems to be completely full. And the reason is for that is again, like I said earlier, when you're out spearfishing, you're on the boat or you're in the water, you're never gonna spool it as perfectly or the same way as you did the first time you do it. So it's never gonna stack up or be compressed as much as it is now. So you always leave a little bit of room for that. Um, but at this point, you can see we got a pretty full reel. I am going to take a little bit extra here and just go ahead and cut from the spool. So I took about a foot, foot and a half extra of line, and this is gonna be so that way we can tie a knot in it. I'm gonna burn that in just so it doesn't fray while we work on it. And at this point, I'm basically gonna tie a uh, double figure eight knot to put a loop on the end of it, so that way we can crimp the shaft and the shooting line off to this. Basically gonna fold the line over on itself like that, create a loop, bring it back over and cross it. And then up here, you're gonna twist that and then bring the loop back through itself, just like that. You can see why it's called the double figure eight and you just tighten it down on itself, like that. This knot is never gonna go anywhere. At basically over time, it just continues to tighten down on itself. You never have to worry about it breaking or coming undone. And this is gonna be the perfect little loop to secure the shaft off to, to your reel line. We will now cut this excess like that. Always leave a little bit, so that way the knot can tighten down on itself. And then we're just gonna burn it like that and cap it. Create a little mushroom head. That's never gonna pull through on itself. And this knot is always constantly just gonna tighten down. So at this point, we can put the gun aside for now. We are gonna grab our shaft and go ahead and get the mono attached to the shaft. So we're gonna open up our mono pack here. Pull out the mono. Pull out the crimps that it comes with. Take those off, put them on the table, and get this mono opened up. Okay, so we're gonna get the mono stretched out, make sure there's no knots, kinks. Make sure we are good to go. All right, so the first step is we're gonna take our crimp and run it down the mono. So like in previous videos about how to rig a spear gun, our line release is on the right side. So we wanna run the mono in through the left side of the shaft, like that. And put it back through the other side of the crimp. So what we're gonna do, now that that's through, is we're gonna burn the end of the mono. So that way it has a little mushroom head on it like that. And that's gonna keep the mono from pulling through the crimp, even if it is a bad crimp. Um, so we'll pull that down to there. And we wanna make sure that the mono is gonna stay clear of the first shark fin. So that is good right there. We will pull that down a little bit more. And we take our crimper. We're gonna use the 1.0 to 2.0 in the crimping tool because it's a 1.6 millimeter mono. And at first crimp, you want to make sure not to go too high so that way the crimp does not pinch down onto the mono it leaves a little bit of a profile at the top and we're going to go back in a little bit lower to make sure we hit the whole thing and the first crimp is done so at this point we're ready to put the shaft into the gun and we will just run that in through the top of the gun like that so that way the mono is underneath the bands and slide it down and lock it into place. Again, making sure there's no knots or kinks or anything in the mono. We're gonna run the mono up the left side of the shaft, over the top, and then down the right side of the muzzle. And then we go down to the line release, and then back up towards the top. So at this point, we're ready to um, cut the mono to length and attach it to our reel line. With this, we don't have to be too specific because we can, with the length that we cut the mono at, because we can either tighten or loosen the reel line as needed. But I usually like to keep mine 
about six to 10 inches from the muzzle of the gun, especially on a gun of this size. So we're gonna give it a cut. So now we can slide our other crimp over the monofilament and we're gonna take the other end of the monofilament and slide it through the loop that we made in our real line earlier. We are gonna take the mono, now put it back through. And at this point, we've basically created a double loop going into each other. Take our lighter, do the same thing on this end of the mono and slide that to the beginning of the crimp. And then at this point, I like to tighten it down just a little bit to make a loop about that size. We're gonna take our crimping tool, again, the 1.0 to 2.0 size, making sure we're not all the way at the end of the crimp. Boom, one crimp. And then go down a little bit and hit the bottom. And just like that, we have secured our shaft to our shooting line. And we just need to make sure that everything is rigged and tight. And like I said before, expect this to be loose when you go to rig it because that's how we did it. And then we just tighten up the real line like so. You can see where it's meeting. So at this point we have secured the shaft to the real line. Um, and as easy as that, we have rigged a gun with real line, mono, which is a shooting line, and you're good to go. This should last you, you know, for years to come. Super simple, super easy. You can do it at home. And yeah, you're good to go.